Welcome to another edition of Grace Under Pressure, where my guest today is Dr. Oleg Konovalov. I'll tell you all about Dr. Oleg in just a moment. Grace Under Pressure is that story, is that show that deals with what's too often dismissed as the soft stuff, the carrying the commitment they exert toward others. And when you do it from a leadership perspective, as you will definitely discover that Dr. Oleg is, um, you do it with a common cause of bringing people together. Um, welcome, Dr. Oleg Konovalov. So. Thank you, John Baldoni. Can we skip that diplomatic part? You know, just like, <laughs> John, thank you for having me on your show. Thank yeah. you. Uh, that's good. Well, um, I want to tell folks all about you. You and I have known each other for, I think, four, well, four years now. Um, you. And you are a global thought leader. And I remember when you were working on your for, uh, your big book, The Vision Code, uh, and it came out to be a smash hit. So, um, but we're not here to talk vision. We're here to talk about your brand new book, which is... Um, Whoa. The Fisherman's Path to Leadership, 224 Lessons from the Wisdom of Nature. Uh, Oleg has been named uh, one of the top global experts in leadership. He was distinguished, shortlisted for distinguished award by the big time boys, Thinkers 50, here on the Global Gurus, um, as am I. And like you, we are both members of 100 Coaches. Honored to be so. So, Dr. Oleg Konovalov, welcome to Grace Under Pressure. Thank you. Great. Now let's jump in here. So I have known that you've had a hobby of fishing for, I think, since I met you the very first time. <laughs> and um, to me, here's, you know, I grew up in the Midwest. I live in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So fishing is a, a big deal. I've got a good, very good friend who's an avid fisherman and talks about it all the time. But to me, fishing, I've always thought of it as a solitary endeavor, but you've expanded the concept of fishing to include teamwork. Tell us about that teaming when it comes to fishing. So. <laughs> John, you see, you can't applause with one hand. Fishing, and I spend a time on a deep sea trawlers at sea in the North Atlantic, you know, you can't do much on your own. It's all about crew. It's all you having a brilliant crew. And we all depend on each other. And it's it's not about job descriptions, right? It's nothing like that. We're completely dependent on each other. And it's all about what we do together. It's, it's one of the top 10 most deadliest professions in the world. We are all at the highest risk. And every day, one fishing trawler is lost. Right? There is an old saying that seagulls are the souls of those fishermen that, fishermen that lost at sea. So believe me, quite a few seagulls are added every day. And it's fairly risky. Another angle is very interesting because the corporate world can't grasp it. Fishermen are not paid by salaries or wages. They're paid in shares, shares out of the cash. So we got a fish, we sold that fish, and everyone got a certain share. Captain Moore engineers less you know just like so it's all about shares i even work with a great captain and andy used to say i love fishing in the roughest weather because at that days the prices are high because of shortage of fish and therefore when we're coming back to harbor our shares are great <laughs> you know it's all about that teamwork it's all about how we support each other. And it's all about how we think in terms all for one and one for all attitude. It's a simple approach. We catch together, we cook together, we eat together. Right. Uh, just a quick thing. When you're on a fishing trawl, I suppose it depends yeah. on for whom you're working, 
Yeah. How long are you at sea? Is it a day? Is it a week? Or what? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I was on a deep sea trawlers. It's a uh, fresh fish trawlers. So between 10 to 14 days at sea. But we're coming back to harbor and we might stay in, in the docks like for 12 hours between the tides. Quickly unload, get supply and off back to sea. Okay. okay. Now, um, what does, I think it, it, you've talked around it, but I want to drill down here. What does this um, trawler culture, fishing culture, teach us about building culture? I'm assuming that there are people from different backgrounds, um, some of whom you may not choose as teammates, but they are. So tell us about building a culture. So, Can you imagine a passenger on board of a trawler? Every trip, captain confirms who would go on a trip or who would not go on a trip, right? Even say, hey, I want to be on board and things, you know, all airmarked. Yet, it's not about being passengers on board because it's, it's not about your level of performance. It's about how you're devoted to what we all do together. Because believe me or not, the work is hard. You could be spending like 20 hours a day working hard in the rough seas, you know, <laughs> rock and rolling on a, <laughs> on a slippery deck, you know. And it's all about how you are fitting within that crew, how you're supportive, how you're contributing. It's all about your commitment. Your ability, your mastery, your capacity will come, with, you know, fairly quickly if you are committed. If you are not committed, if you are just passenger, it doesn't work. So, I mean, in, in short, it's not enough to be proficient in what you do. You have to be a uh, a good teammate. You have to. Oh, you yeah. have to pitch in and do what is necessary. Exactly, because you know you could have whatever the diplomas. But if you're not committing yourself, it doesn't work. You are a passenger. You just want a right of a fun show. No, it's about hard work. It's all about this. So um, what about, I mean, you, you've spoken about um, the, the your fishing and the, the way compensation is determined is by shares. So yeah. does that boil down to uh, all for one and one for all? Or how, how does that work? So, concept of we're all in this together, I suppose. So, it works in all cases, whether it's you at sea on those trawlers, or I spent I don't know how many years in salmon fly fishing in Arctic, and in most cases, you are not going to explore a, a, somewhere a remote Arctic river on your own. You are going together with partners, friends, companions, and it's all about supporting each other. I'll give you, I'll share a story. You know, we went together with a friend of mine fairly far, you know, for brown trout. And it was like, this, is, now, this is recreational fishing. This is recreational, correct? Yes. Okay. And the fun thing, it was like first days of October and it was the first snow. You know, it was fairly cold. And we decided to find the Arctic route or golden route, which is like a northern version of Chinchen. <laughs> <laughs> and I have tried a few routes, you know, because it was difficult. The vegetation is gone and I was tried. And very soon I got very sick. Trust me, I lost a few kilos in a day, you know, just like <laughs> very sick. And a friend of mine, he dragged me back to a car. It was quite a distance. You know, help me with everything, and we just got back together. So we set up a camp. So it's all about relying that somebody will do, will cover my back, right? I have, I have, I have a great experience of facing really risky situations on board of a trawler when the, you know seemingly exceptionally strong wires. Uh, snapping and some kind of a heavy stuff flying at you and people saving you just taking it off it you know we, it's all about this 
if you're not doing this, if you are not helping each other, we are fragmented units. We are not a team, right? And therefore, what we are sharing together? Nothing. We're just a crowd. <laughs> okay, let's take it back a little bit into the, quote, civilian sector here. So it's one thing, and because I talked to folks who have been in um, combat situations, and what you're talking about is kind of a unit cohesion. So how do we, when you talk to, you're a noted consultant in leadership development and visioning, so when you talk to the uh, corporate world about building culture, um, it's, it's a, a different dichotomy because people go home at night. <laughs> so what, what's the lesson for that we can learn from you on that? So. Hmm. You see, every fishing trip demands a vision for it. What I'm, it's not about, oh, we'll go there, we'll catch a fish and things like that. No, it doesn't work that way. It still demands be very good. And when we talk about teams and how to infuse a vision, it's a fairly similar approach. First thing, I would say critical elements. It must be very simple. Because everything you do in fishing and everything you do in leadership must be simple. Learning how to tie strong knots is a fishing basic. But mastery is in how to tie fewer knots. Because then your tackle will be really strong and reliable. Because every knot would cause a tangle or it will snap. And, you know, it's leadership is disciplined simplicity. If you clear what you are sharing, people will remember it. If it's complicated, people say, as you said, they will be back home, they will forget about it as a nightmare. Now it doesn't work. I like how you're drilling this down to simplicity because that's um, so easy to say, but in our world, which is global in nature, and we're being pushed and pulled by different directions externally, as well as internally, um, sometimes we lose track of what exactly, why are we here and what are we doing? So um, this maybe gets to your vision, but I think it's important to, um, to all of us to learn. So what do we hang on to in these seeking clarity? So It is, because without simplicity, if it's not simple, it wouldn't be clear. And again, clarity allows us to achieve something more with less resources or do more with less. And again, if we don't have a clarity, as you rightly said, we can't set up those clear metrics. What do we want to achieve? It's not just like, hey, we go fishing because we want to catch so many kilos of fish. It doesn't work that way. It's about setting standards, what we do, how we support, how we think. It's all about quality and it would lead to excellent execution or effective execution. And clarity is important for effective decision making because, yes, you absolutely 100% uh, agree with you. People are most often in doubt. And if we're clear, we're good at decision making. You know, doubts grow from a lack of clarity and block decision making. Put that way, God gives us a gift of decision making. The devil offers us a myriad of choices and we are lost in them. We must have that clarity to be able to make effective decisions. Again, it would lead to focus. If we are not clear, we can focus on the critical things. And then we start talking about focus as a main goal itself. But focus is only a tool that allows us to, to go far. Put it in a simple way. You can't catch a fish casting two rods simultaneously into different directions. No chance. 
I like that. Yeah, you, you're cross purposes right from the get go. Now you have an in interesting chapter. I mean, first of all, um, in this book, what I like about it, there's something of relevancy, either a good story or and tons of wisdom and action items to think about and do. And that's a kind of uh, book that I like to sink my teeth in. You can kind of jump in anywhere and you find something. But one of my favorites is conversations around the campfire. And um, so, uh, and that gets into the human element of um, what we do. And so um, what led you to develop that chapter and what stands out to you about that? Because I, I like the humanity behind it. It's all about people. It's all about being human. You see, we are learning from each other. And we are becoming better through the interactions through each other. If we talk, let's think. Salmon behave differently every year. Therefore, I must talk to others to learn what they know. It's about sharing your passion. It's about sharing your experience. And leadership is critical because what I have learned, fishing is a labor of love. And leadership is a labor of love. Therefore, love and care are my best tackles to catch people's hearts and minds. And therefore, when you sit around campfire, I have noticed a very interesting thing. Noise attracts attention. Quiet words when we sit about campfire because no one is shouting. We speak in a normal, you know, quiet voice. We're sharing experience. It that quiet voice open hearts, and therefore it's not about competition. It's about how we good we are together. How we enjoy being humans together. You know, well, in this chapter, you uh, in this section, you have a chapter uh, called A Fisherwoman with Great Passion, uh, featuring someone we both know. Oh, uh, Lori. Our, our good friends, Lori, Lori Ames. So um, yeah. uh, you asked her to contribute to this. And what did you learn from Lori's example? So, by the way, she is a publicist for me as well as for you. So a book publicist. So. What have you learned from her in this chapter? She she enjoys fishing as a hobby for her, too. So. Every Tuesday, after the 1st of May, she's always at sea, right? Okay. The first thing first, Lori is exceptionally passionate, you know, with what she does. She does the best for her authors, and that's full commitment, you know, just like simple is simple. It's about, if you're not passionate, don't do this. You know, it's a wrong business. And then I was thinking, she's very creative. And she's always thinking, like, changing mindset all the time. Aha, uh -huh, that's, with this book, we'll work that way, or we will approach in that direction. You know, So she's always creative. She's always on the go to change and expand her mindset. And bless you for your patience. <laughs> well, with, I'll say that for me as well as for you. So, yeah. so um, now when I stand back and I think of fishing, whether it be commercial like a trawler or uh, recreational, <clears throat> uh, what comes to me, because I am not a proficient fisherman by any means, is failure. <clears throat> In other words, you don't catch the fish. So what do you learn from not catching? So, so Rod, oh. John, that's a brilliant question because there are different ways to look at the way. I lost tons of fish, right? And it's not just like, this is okay, this is normal, but it's not about bursting into tears. It's about sinking. And uh, it's a bit of evolution, at least for me, because initially I thought, hey, the stupid fish, stupid me, and then I start realizing, hey, the first thing first, whether I was prepared to land a, a really large fish, then I understood, no, I wasn't prepared. 
it was beyond my capacity. I was enthusiastic, but I wasn't prepared. And then it goes further. I realized to what extent we are prepared for success. Today is a great trend. People talk about, I want to be successful. What will you do with your success? You know, you have it like, I don't know, huge salmon taking your fly and actually pulling you off the bank, you know, just like pulling you like, I don't know, a submarine into a water. <laughs> and if you would land that fish, what will you do with it? It's all about this. And that's okay. Believe me, that fish is smarter than you in terms of how to behave and act in that streams and water and go around the rocks. Little thought, nothing caught. That means I wasn't thinking well enough how to get that fish. Uh, no, that's great. Uh, uh, what is it? Nothing thought, little, little thought. thought. Nothing. Little thought, nothing caught. Little thought, nothing caught. Great example. Now, toward that, while this book is about fishing tail and it's the fisherman's path to leadership, you have some elegiac comments in here about the fish themselves. So um, I think you alluded. So what if what if fish themselves taught you, Oli? <sighs> I would tell you, I must think in the way fish think, right? Because I could feel comfortable myself as a fisherman thing nice weather but it's not good for fish because fish salmon prefers overcast it doesn't like those shiny days because what are becoming is crystal clear and fish feel spooky the same with you working with people it's not about me how comfortable am i at my position it's about how people what people feel it's all about matter of preparation. Fishing begins at home. You are even preparing like tiny flies or checking your tackles, lines and everything. In the winter, you're preparing for a season uh, to think, okay, I would not do this. I will focus on this. It's being about efficient. In leadership, it's about being prepared. Preparations means a lot. It's about doing everything in quality because salmon is very smart fish and if you do something in a tricky way just like ah it will flimsy flimsy it will go it doesn't work that fish survived the million years evolution you can't trick it you know in the stupid things it's about strategy fish as i mentioned fish knows everything about underwater life and it's about being strategic and about how to approach that fish, how to get it. But the main lesson is humility. Strategy relies on humility. Your ability to think differently relies on humility. It's about accepting your mistakes, as for instance, you lost a fish, and learning from every mistake. And you learn every time and accept every time that you know little or nothing that's great so uh, now we've, we've praised the fish um what have you learned from people who fail at fishing <laughs> back to that saying little thought nothing caught it's not a matter to what extent you are successful it's a matter to what extent you are persistent because it's not a vanity fair. Hey, I got a most expensive rod. I have paid like a couple of grand for a rod and a grand for a reel, you know, just like. It's not about this. It's about how you interact with nature. It's very important to be successful in fishing. You must be that part of that nature. You must immerse yourself. It's like being a leader. You must be part of a team that you are leading. It's not just like commanding from a top. Be a part of it. 
and that is quite important. This is where people fail. They don't want to, this. They're distancing themselves from nature. They believe that they're masters of nature. No, we're not smarter than nature. Nature is much smarter than we are. Good lesson. Now, we are racing along here, and we keep, keep going on for hours. But as you know, uh, we uh, you are busy, and I'm busy. But so... Um, and as you know, uh, Oleg, I ask every guest a story about uh, grace. Do you have a short story that you'd like to share with us? So. You see, I, I'll give you an example. And it's, again. It's fishermen. They tend to repeat the same mistake. They're setting their drug system too tight. So the fish is strong, it fights back in a big way. But when you set it too tight, it breaks all the lines. In engineering, there is a term called you must give every part a tolerance on the margins. The same when you talk with people, it's not about being tight on the control. It's about giving people that tolerance on the margin. And if you are a leader, think you're only a human. And this is a great lesson I learned from Marshall Goldsmith. Forgive yourself, you're only a human. Allow yourself a tolerance on the margins, but allow, an, allow even greater margins to your people. And What's interesting, I, I work with one of these great captains. Alcohol is proximity on board by all the rules and means. But imagine after a few days like fishing, working 20 hours a day, you know, just like nonstop, you can't fall asleep. That's it. You're just like over exhausted. And Jack Lilly, he was always having a bottle of famous grouse whiskey, and he was getting into a galley room, pouring glasses, giving us that tolerance on the margins. A couple of drinks, and you sleep like a baby. Okay. It's about grace. It's about care for people, regardless whatever the rules, but you giving people a chance to shine, to feel comfortable, and that's important. What a wonderful story. And I like how you uh, tied it to an engineering uh, concept of tolerance at the margins. Isn't that what great leaders do with their people? So, and with ourselves. <laughs> so, right. It is. So, Oli, your newest book is uh, uh, Fisherman's Path to Leadership. Where can we find it? And how can we find you? So, Oh, right. The book is available on Amazon. It's in Kindle, in paperback, in hardcover. It's already on the translation to Arabic language. And uh, how to find me? I'm available on LinkedIn, right? And I'm fairly responsive to all the messages. And they could, people could find me on my website, olegkonovalov.com. And they could see services which I provide and learn quite a few things. <laughs> Well, my friend, um, it is always good to talk to you, and especially today, and I wish you much success with the Fisherman's Path to Leadership because um, you have reverence for your topic that bring, illuminates it, and it, it gives us uh, a, a peek into our own humanity and capacity to lead. So thank you very much, and with that, my friend, we will go out. Thank you.